Hey there everybody, Dan Calloway here again, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And uh, I've got something for you today that I uh, wanted to share with my Raspberry Pi um, fans. Um, you know, I do more than uh, in just basic Linux distros here on this channel. Uh, of course, uh, Raspberry Pi runs on Raspbian OS, which is a derivative of Debian, uh, or Debian Stretch, it's referred to. Um, so anyway, it's really Linux. And so anyway, uh, there's a, an application that I've recently uh, become aware of um, because I'm concerned about uh, several servers running on my Pi, one of them uh, obviously being the SSH server, SSHD, Apache server as well, and FTP, etc., etc. So, you know, a good idea for system administrators or just typical users of uh, Linux, uh, especially on the Raspberry Pi or any Linux system for that matter, any Linux distro, is to monitor your system logs uh, from time to time to see what's going on. One of them that's uh, kind of critical to monitor is your authentication logs and that's located uh, in a Debian system anyway at, at uh, backslash var backslash log backslash uh, or forward slash rather var forward slash log forward slash uh, auth dot log a-u-t-h dot l-o-g um, and I'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute but the application that uh, monitors that particular log for me and all logs basically uh, for the Raspberry Pi for uh, servers is called fail to ban. Uh, never heard of that application. I found out about it and what fail to ban does uh, is it actually goes out and uh, monitors those logs for you, especially the auth log, uh, auth dot log, and it uh, looks at people trying to hack into your system and if it uh, detects that they're doing it in such a way that indicates hacker activity, it will actually ban them you have control over how long it bans them, how long it takes to ban, how many retries they have, the max retries that they have to log into a system uh, before it bans them, and how long it will ban them once it does that. Here's a website. Uh, it's called www.a2hosting.com. Nice website. One of the things it's got a knowledge base here on fail to ban server hardening, how to harden the server with fail to ban. And so um, I've hardened mine uh, after my installation. So let's look at this. Uh, fail to ban on the Debian system or Ubuntu um, is installed by using the command app-get install fail to ban. And once you get it installed, um, then you can uh, log into your server uh, using SSH and at the command prompt. Uh, what you can do is you can take the Etsy fail to ban jail dot conf file and you can copy that file to the jail.local file. And the reason for that is the jail.conf file gets overwritten and updates and so anything, any changes you would make there configuration wise would get overwritten and so that's not a good idea. So you want to create a jail.local file um, and the reason for that is because there's really like five areas that you need to be concerned about in that jail.local file uh, you want to locate the default section of the file itself because it just copies that jail.conf over to jail.local. That does not get overwritten. So anything that you um, change here will remain here. Okay. The areas that you want to look at is the ignore IP, and that's important because you want to put in your local loop loopback 127.0.0.1 slash 8. And then the IP address of your Pi is probably a good idea as well. Uh, or any other IP address that you use on the network to SSH into your Pi, for example. You want to put those in the ignore IP and you put a space in between each IP address. You can use uh, just normal 32-bit uh, uh, dotted quad IP address. Or you can use... Uh, whole network here where you have a CIDR notation slash 8 here for instance on the 127.0.0.1 slash 8 um, and so you want to do that like I said so you don't lock yourself out of your uh, uh, you get banned rather by your own application and I've done that and I'll show you that the other thing that you want to do is uh, look at ban time 
Uh, and the description here, it's also in the file. It says this option defines in seconds how long an IP address or host is banned. The default setting here is 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. I think I've increased mine to 86,400, which is 24 hours. So if anybody gets banned on my uh, fail to ban application for trying to hack into my SSH server, for example, they get banned for a whole 24 hour period. I, I don't play around. Um, that way they can't keep trying over and over and over and over and uh, hope they get in. Uh, recently, I've looked at my var log, auth log. Uh, I don't have it where I can show you now because it's been uh, superseded, but um, back on the 6th of June, or July rather, this is the 7th, you know, so a day ago, uh, or it might have been two days ago, the 5th, I had uh, somebody continually retry over and over when the max retry here was set for five. Uh, the max retry, by the way, is the option defining the number of failures the host can be allowed before it is banned. I've decreased that number to three. I only give them three chances, and if they can't get in in three tries, they're banned. Um, and I got one from India. I did a, a trace route on the IP address, and it traced all the way back to India. So somebody from India was trying to log into my SSA server. The thing about it is, is if they're successful in logging into your SSH server, I mean, they can literally get into your Pi, do whatever they want to do, get as root privileges, perhaps. Um, and uh, if they know the root password, that's why you never log into your Pi or any Linux system that has root for any length of time. Uh, or leave it that way, because then if they get in, then they can, uh, you know, they automatically have root privileges. But if they get into your Pi and they can gain control of your Pi, then they can gain control of anything connected to it, your whole LAN, if they want to. Uh, drop viruses in it, do whatever they want. So anyway, um, you want to ignore the IPs. You want to change the band time. Like I said, I changed mine from 10 minutes to, to 86,400 seconds, which is 24 hours. And then the max retries, I decrease that number from 5 to 3. And then the find time is the option that's used together with the max entry option. Um, it's the time period specified by find time here that bans the, uh, that determines the length of time uh, that they have to do their tries until they reach max retry. And when they reach max tree, uh, retry threshold, then they're banned, okay, for whatever length of time you set in the ban time. Uh, we'll take a look at that file in a moment. Um, there are global options in the fail to ban file, and it's basically just a matter when you set up the jails. The jail, by the way, is something you set up for every server you have. I've got an SSH server, I've got a FTP server, I've got a, an Apache server, so I've got jails on all three of those. It's basically just a matter of changing the enabled equals false to enabled equal true and restarting uh, fail to ban and uh, it reads the jail.local file and you will actually it will actually start monitoring rather your uh, logs for you for those three servers. Um, to restart your fail to ban server uh, fail to ban application rather to the client you just run a service fail to ban restart okay and that'll uh, restart it for you. All right so let's take a look at that file. Let me open up uh, my application here called Mova Xterm in Windows 10. I'm on my Windows 10 platform. Go to full screen. Let me get into my Pi here. And um, when it pulls up, then I'll go and bring that over. Let me uh, increase the terminal zoom here. Let me get it just a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. All right, so I'm in my Pi. Let me uh, log in as root told you that you shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to have to do this. So I need to get in and take a look at some things. It's okay to do it for short term. Just don't leave it logged in this way. Um, when you install fail to ban, let me do a where is fail to ban. It gets installed. Um, oh, P-R-E-I-S, fail to ban. Okay. Fail to ban gets installed uh, at Etsy fail to ban for the configuration. And then there's a uh, man page, user share man, man one. Um, all right, so we want to go into Etsy fail to ban. So let's do a CD Etsy fail to ban. All right, and then let's look at the listing on that. 
And here are the files. I've made a couple of copies here, feldeband.conf and my jl.conf file. But what you want to do is you want to copy this failed to ban, I mean this jl.conf file, and you want to copy it to a jl.local file because this one, as I told you, gets overwritten. So you want to copy that one. So I wanted to get into nano jl.local. Sorry. Uh, back up here. All right, so we let's get back in here again. I wondered why I was having to reset this. Okay, so I've already done the re ignore IP. I already put that in. I've got three IP addresses. Come down here for the band of time, and I've got uh, 86,400 seconds. Um, the find time is 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. So that means that a user on the outside has three attempts here with a max retry of three within a 10 minute period, which is the threshold period. If within that 10 minute period they try four times and they can't get in, they're banned, okay? And they're banned for a full day uh, based on the ban time, which is 86,400 seconds. All right, so let's come on down to file. And um, here's where you need to set up your jails. And uh, so we get down to it here. Here's the jail section. I've got an SSHD, which is the daemon server for SSH, and I've got enabled equals true, and, um, and that, that's one jail. I've got an SSHD, uh, distributed denial of service, um, for that's enabled as well, okay? Enabled equals true. And then I've got one more, which is the Apache authentication server. And that's enabled equals true as well. And so I have those set up. And so that's, that's all I really need to show you in this file. So you go ahead and, and do a control X and yes, when, if you make changes in the file. And then you'll need to do that restart. And so that's fail to ban uh, service restart. Oh, that's not it. What was that command again? I've forgotten already. Um, service fail to ban restart. That's what it is. Okay, so service re, uh, fail to ban or restart. Okay, and uh, if you don't get any errors, that means everything's okay and the service started fine. All right, so let's do a system CTL um, fail to ban um, status. No, nope, that's not it. System CTL. TL, not LT, Dan. Fail to ban. Status. I can't talk and type at the same time. Yep, that's not it either. Uh, it must be status fail to ban. I always get those mixed up. There we go. All right, so it's system CTL, status fail to ban. And you can see here that it is active, it's running, it's enabled. And the vendor preset is enabled as well. You want to make sure that it is enabled. And the reason for that is, is if it's disabled, um, when you do a restart of uh, your Pi, or you log out, or you shut down the Pi and you bring it back up cold, uh, then that particular service will not start, start automatically. You want to make sure it starts automatically. Okay, so now the, the logs, or actually the client, is the fail to ban client status is how you get a status on that. And it says that the number of jails I have set up is three, and I showed you the three that I have set up. And they are apache.off, sshd, and sshd-ddos, okay? If you want a detail, more detailed look at the status of, say, for instance, the sshd, or the daemon server for ssh, and you do a fail to ban client status sshd and there you go um, the status of that jail is uh, it's currently failed total failed is zero there's the file it's looking at okay and then currently banned here is zero currently total banned is zero and then the ip addresses if they were banned would be listed here um, 24 hour period has elapsed since the last time that uh, failed to ban banned actually three people uh, who exceeded the max retry free. And so their IP addresses were listed down here. 
and then it did say currently band three, total band three, and so this is working. I mean, it's actually doing its job, uh, keeping people out of my system. So let's look at the var log authorization dot log or auth dot log, and so let's do a cat or let's do a tail. Um, let's do the last 25 lines of the file of uh, var log auth dot log. And there you go. Um, see, this is the last 25 lines of the file. And you can see here where um, I think there was one person who actually uh, was not allowed in. They were using an uh, anonymous. Actually, it's a lot of activities going on here, so it's above that. So let's do a tail uh, dash n um, 50 uh, var log dot log off dot log. I told you I can't type and talk at the same time. Here we go. Authentication failure. Okay, here's one authentication failure. That was a Pam Unix. Uh, somebody tried to get in anonymously on my FTP server here. Um, but yet I don't see that anywhere. Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. Authentication for FTP. Um, somewhere I saw earlier uh, an anonymous user tried to get in. I've got my FTP server set not to accept anonymous, and so they got uh, they weren't not were not allowed in. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is called fail to ban. And uh, it's a great little utility. Uh, highly uh, encourage anybody that's running the Raspberry Pi to download Fail to Ban uh, and uh, set that up. It's easily installed in Debian. You have to get install Fail to Ban uh, and then just follow the directions and uh, set it up. Set up the jails as I showed you there in, um, in your uh, jail.local file. And you're good to go. Restart it and, and uh, leave it running. And it'll protect you, keep you from uh, getting hit by hackers. And so um, take care and uh, go ahead and uh, hit that uh, like button in the uh, bottom there. I'll put a link out to the website for uh, hardening your fail to ban uh, when I upload the video. And uh, go ahead and like the video if you like it in, um, on YouTube. That's the Linux Unix Tech Channel, Data Pioneer. And you have a nice day. Take care.